Let us see an experiment today. Shear center of an open section. Shear center of an open section. The given open section is of thin walled channel section. Thin walled channel section whose one end is fixed. That means it's a cantilever beam type. It's a cantilever beam type. So here the photograph shows the thin walled open section whose one end is fixed. So for the given thin walled open section, we are going to locate the shear center theoretically as well as experimentally. If you look at the section here, in these two holes, we are going to place the weight angles so that we can add the weights. For example, so let me add or show one weight angle, like book kind of thing, right here and here. Okay, so I'm going to add the weights here, okay? okay like this, we are going to add the weights, okay? So I call this uh, distance, I call this distance as AB. Okay, we are going to use uh, one experimental formula. Okay, so we call this as distance AB. Okay, so, and we are going to place the, what to call a uh, dial gauge. We are going to place a dial gauge here, right? And here one dial gauge, okay, right? So let me call, uh, that is the dial gauge reading shown on the left-hand side. Let, it, let us call it as a delta one. And the right-hand side, let it be delta two, okay? Delta one and delta two. So here you could see a sort of a needle, okay? So the needle. So before adding the weight, we have to ensure that the needle is at zero position. Needle is at zero position. And the distance between the needles, or oh sorry, pointer of these two dial gauges, let it be D, small letter D. Okay, this D is nothing but 18 centimeter, one eight, 18 centimeter. And this distance AB is nothing but 1616 centimeter or 160 millimeter. Okay, 160 millimeter. Okay. Now, here you can see the, here we have fixed the dial gauges and the weight angle is also placed, weight angle is also placed. The left-hand side hook, we are going to add the weight of two kg, two kg, right? Two kg. That is, we are going to add weight of 10 numbers. Each weight is 200 gram. So each weight is of 200 gram. So totally 10 numbers, so totally you'll have 2 kg weight acting on the left hand side hook. Once it is loaded with the uh, weight of 2 kg, we have to note down the dial gauge readings here. Delta 1, left hand side, right hand side, delta 2. The next move is remove the weight of 200 gram or 0.2 kg from the left hand side hook and shift it to the right hand side hook. Now you note down the readings, the dial gauge, delta one and delta two. To do this process or repeat this step until the entire weight has been shifted from the left hand side to the right hand side hook. That is, once you reach the weight of two kg on the right hand side hook, you stop your experiment. Stop your experiment. And here, this photograph shows we have added 
weight of 2 kg. Okay, so each weight, each weight is 200 grams. So we have added 10 numbers. So we have to note down the readings delta 1 on the left hand side, delta 2 on the right hand side. Okay, this is a tableau column. Okay, this is a tableau column. Now let us take, for example, okay, let us take, for example, serial number 1, 2, 3, and so on. So first we are adding the weight of uh, 2 kg. That is WTA here, 2 kg. Right hand side, no weight, so weight is 0. So remember that weight of the hook and the weight of the beam is neglected. Now you note down the reading, the delta 1 left hand side dial gauge, enter here, and the delta 2, note down the right hand side dial gauge readings, enter here. Okay. So you could observe here, uh, the zero point here, the needle is, that is readings, actual readings 0, 10, 20, it is going in a clockwise sense. It is going in a clockwise sense. But the needle gets deflected in the counterclockwise sense. So the counterclockwise reading, readings are entered as, are taken as a negative under delta 1 call, under delta 1 call. Okay. That's very, very important. Okay. So we are entering delta 1, delta 2. Then you shift the 200 gram or 0.2 kg to the right hand side. So I'm shifting uh, 0.2 kg here to the right hand side. So my weight will be here on the left hand side, 1.8 kg. Now you wrote down, note down the left hand side, delta one reading, delta two reading. So like this, you repeat until you reach WA zero and WB two kg. So we have to repeat the experiments. Enter the readings delta 1, delta 2. Here, <clears throat> delta 1 minus delta 2 divided by D. Delta 1 minus delta 2 divided by D. D is nothing but distance between these two pointers. As I told you in the earlier slide. So this distance is nothing but 18 centimeter or 180 millimeter. So you have to enter in this, you have to fill this column. You have to fill this column for all the 10 readings, for all the 10 readings. So now what is E, okay? What is E? So E is nothing but AB into WA minus WB divided by two times WB. AB, as I told you, distance between the hooks, two hooks, which is nothing but 16 centimeter or 160 millimeter. Okay. W suffix B is nothing but the total weight, vertical weight or total weight acting on the beam. Okay. Total weight acting on the beam, which is nothing but 2 kg fixed for all the readings. So WA weight minus WB weight multiplied by AB, which is nothing but 18 centimeter or 180. Uh, AB 16 centimeters, sorry, 16 centimeter or 160 uh, millimeter divided by two times the total weight acting on the beam. This total weight acting on the beam is 2 kg fixed throughout our experiment. And we have to enter this E value for all the readings, for all the readings. Okay. Now, this is the theoretical approach to calculate the theoretical shear center location for the given section. Okay. So from the beginning onwards, I'm saying uh, shear center location or shear center of a given open section. Then what is shear center? What is shear center? So shear center is nothing but a point in a section through which if any external shear load acts, it produces, that's a beam section produces or the beam produces only bending and not twisting. Okay, so we are trying to locate that shear center point theoretically as well as experimentally. So this is the experimental way of getting the shear center location, which will be used for creating a or plotting a graph. And this is the theoretical approach. Okay, so H is nothing but the height of the web. That is from, uh, let us take from here to here. Um, this is the height of the web, which is nothing but 75 millimeter. We call this as a H. And this is nothing but flanges, top and bottom flanges. So flange width, we call it as a B. Okay, flange width, we call it as a B. 
which is 50 millimeter, five zero, and thickness is uniform. Thickness is uniform. We have got a uniform uh, thickness uh, channel section. Here, thickness is taken as a small t. Thickness t is taken as a small t, which is nothing but two millimeter. It's nothing but two millimeter. Width is 50 millimeter, five zero. Height is 75 millimeter. If you substitute all the values here, you can get the uh, shear center, theoretical value of shear uh, center for the given section, which we are getting from the geometrical dimensions, geometrical dimensions of a given cross section, a given cross section. So here you can see here uh, the complete weight which we had on the left hand side is being shifted to the right hand side. Okay. So now we will see a small video how the experiment is being conducted just for the demonstration purpose. Just for the demonstration purpose. We are not following the dial gauge readings that we uh, get during the conduct of experiments. Okay. The video is only for the demonstration purpose. We are not following any readings that are shown on the dial gauge during our experimentation. Now we are going to see the experiment, how it is uh, being conducted. Okay. So first we have to ensure zero on your dial gauge. First, we are adding five numbers of weight, that is one kg. Next, we are adding another five numbers. Now, total weight acting on the left hand side root is 2 kg. Now, note down the dial gauge readings. So, we are not following these readings in our tabular column. Okay. This is just for demonstration purpose. So, left hand side dial gauge gives dial delta 1, right hand side gives delta 2. Now, remove 0.2 kg or 200 gram. Add it on the right hand side too. Now we have to note out delta 1 on the left hand side dial gauge and delta 2 on the right hand side dial gauge. Repeat this until you shift all the weights to the right hand side too. Now on the right hand side, 0.4 kg load is acting. Left hand side, 1.6 kg load is acting. Again, 0.2 kg shifted to the right hand side. So, 0.6 kg on the right hand side, 1.4 kg on the left hand side. That is, total weight of weight acting on the beam remains the same, that is, 2 kg. Again, 0.2 kg shifted to the right hand side. Delta 1 reading. Delta 2 reading. Remember, we are not following these dial gauge readings in our calculation. So, again, one more 0.2 kg shifted to the right hand side. Delta 1 reading. Delta 2 reading. So again, 0.2 kg shifted to the right hand side. One more 0.2 kg or 200 gram. Delta 1 reading on the left hand side dial gauge. And the delta 2 reading on the right hand side dial gauge. 
again one more point to get started delta 1 delta 2 Lost one more weight, point two kg. Shift. Now entire weight is shifted from the left hand side root to the right hand side two. So delta one reading, delta two reading. Now the entire weight is being shifted from left hand side to the right hand side. Now we have entered all the values in our tabular column. We have to calculate. The E value for each and every uh, dial gauge readings. So delta one minus delta two divided by D, and the E values are plotted in a graph to calculate or to arrive the shear center location experimentally. Here is the manual for the particular experiment. Aim. Apparatus required and the cross sectional dimensions of a given channel section. This is a diagrammatic representation. Okay. And this is the procedure that we need to follow. So, whatever I have explained. In the video or in the beginning, just entered here step by step. You can easily read and understand. So, this is the tableau column. Okay. So, you can see here the weight is the beginning in the left hand side, WA is 2 kg. At the end, you have got 2 kg here. Okay. Whereas at the A point, you have got 0. So, delta 1 reading, sorry, this is delta 2. Made a mistake here. So delta one minus delta two divided by d, and this is the experimental values for each readings, which will be used for plotting a graph. This is the experimental calculation formula. This is a theoretical calculation. Twenty millimeter we are getting, and this is the plot. So x-axis is delta one minus delta two divided by d. And this is the E value. Okay. Just plot it, obtain a straight line expression. Okay. And this point where delta 1 minus delta 2 divided by D is 0, which means that along the y axis, along the y axis, somewhere here, somewhere here. So this distance is nothing but. 19.9 millimeter, okay, 19.9 or something millimeter, okay. So that is the experimental location, this location where delta one minus delta two divided by T, where the straight line intersects with the Y axis. You can plot this uh, manually also. If you plot manually, you will get the exact answer on your graph sheet. Okay. So, this is the results. The shear center location from the web of the given channel section is by theoretically 20 millimeter and experimentally 19.91 millimeter. Thank you.